morning. And welcome to our worship on this second Sunday after Epiphany. If you are a visitor, we welcome you especially. Please make yourself known to us and sign your name in our guest book before you leave today. Just a few reminders. Uh, first of all, the, um, the lay support group for Sam Graham will meet following worship downstairs in the session room, or in the ladies' uh, parlor. Session, they're using that now to meet, but it's still a parlor. So we'll meet there uh, right after worship for a very brief meeting. Also, um, remember the walking group is meeting still every Monday and Friday, and it is a marvelous group. We do our walk and then we enjoy uh, coffee, tea, and fellowship. So please come along and join us. And also, um, the session will meet in the parlor uh, this coming Thursday at 10. And our Wednesday at 10 Bible study will attempt to meet uh, this week. It seems that um, Wednesday is the chosen day for storms. So um, we, we didn't have our study this past week, so we'll start fresh, hopefully this coming week. Also, uh, next Sunday at 7, there is a unity service for the Week of Prayer for Christian Unity. It's going to be held at the Christian Fellowship Church at 7. And there's some more information on that service um, for you to read. I would commend the, the other announcements to your reading. Let us now prepare to worship. Almighty oh, God.
assured that the one who calls us to hear and obey already knows the confession of our hearts and is ready to forgive. Let us confess our sin before God and before one another. Let us join together in our prayer of confession. Holy God, you see into each of us and know us fully as creatures in need of your constant care. We confess that we have neither heard your word nor followed your will. We have failed our nation, neighbors, families, friends, and ourselves. Give us ears to hear your wisdom. Lead us to honesty and faith so that we may begin again with renewed strength. In Jesus' name, amen. God knows the hearts of those who seek forgiveness, and by grace you have been saved. In Jesus' name you have been forgiven. Your sins are no more. You have been made clean. God strengthens you with freedom through the Holy Spirit in Christ Jesus. Thanks be to God. Amen. Prayer for illumination. By your Holy Spirit, O God, open our ears, our eyes, our hearts, and our minds to the Holy Word so that it comes to rule within us for Jesus' sake. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Our Old Testament reading <clears throat> comes from 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 3 to 10 and 19. Samuel's calling and prophetic activity. The Lamb of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again. Samuel, Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again. A third time and he got up and went to Eli and said here I am for you called me then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy therefore Eli said to Samuel go lie down and if he calls you he shall say speak Lord for your servant is listening so Samuel went and lay down in his place now the Lord came and stood there calling as before Samuel Samuel and Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. see any children out there today, so, well, we're all children of God, but <laughs> really young children. So we will sing the hymn straight through.
responsive is from the Book of Praise, number 664. It is high, I cannot attain it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in shale, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning, and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there thy hand shall lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, let only darkness cover me, and the light about me be night. Even the darkness is not dark to thee. The night is bright as the day. For darkness is as light with thee. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me, and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Amen. Our Gospel reading today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 35 to 42. Chapter 1, verses 35 to 42. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. <coughs> when Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? And they said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. The word of the Lord. Sometimes you maybe tell a joke or a story and 
they don't quite get it. Um, Colleen sometimes will tell me things that I don't quite get, and I'll have to ask her to repeat it, and sometimes more than once, so I can form a little chain of thought in my alleged mind and know what she's talking about. Sometimes it takes a while. Having to go over things again, having to come back again to ask questions. So, you know, if the disciples were like that, then why should we be any different? Don't feel guilty for not getting it. An important aspect of the ability to get it seems to involve openness and willingness to listen and to see beneath the surface of things. And of course, this is illustrated largely in the story of the calling of Samuel, read today by Samuel. Not a coincidence. Well, it's almost a comedy. Because at the beginning, no one is getting it. No one is hearing properly and no one seeing much. And of course, this is illustrating the fact that the whole community of Israel has lost its vision. And so they bed down in the temple, um, the old priest Eli and uh, the young man Samuel, and then of course you get this. It, it would be wonderful to stage this. Uh, this this theophany that comes in, Samuel, Samuel, and of course Samuel, what? <laughs> Samuel, Samuel, what? And of course this happens like three times, and he gets up and he goes to see the old priest. The old says, Oh, no, 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 sorry, go back to bed. You hear things. It's a guy do sometimes with the dog, the dog will bark. You run to the door and say, You're hearing things. You're hearing these so many did that. So many did that. So, of course, then um, the old priest, you know, he can't see and he won't see. And he's lost his vision too. His aged eyes are dim. But much more importantly, metaphorically speaking, he's closed his eyes to the reality that is right in front of his nose. He has ignored the activities of his deviant sons who are bringing ruin on his house and innocent abroad. And so, it, Samuel thinks it's the old priest calling, but it isn't. Samuel doesn't understand that he has to lie still and wait. But of course, instead, he runs to and fro each time he hears the sound of his name. And eventually, Eli begins to get it. He realizes what is happening. He recovers something of his wisdom and his capacity to see below the surface of things. Go back to where you were and wait and listen, he courses Samuel. And then when you hear, stay where you are and listen again. How much do we need to listen in churches, in communities, in neighborhoods, in families? Not listening in the sense of merely hearing words, but a deeper understanding or a deeper listening with intuition and observation that is the prelude to understanding and deeper comprehension. How often do we listen?
to understand as individuals in families, communities, and churches. And when we don't listen, why don't we? Because of fear of what we might become aware of if we do, and thus of what we might consequently need to do or say or refrain from doing or saying. Perhaps it's often difficult to listen attentively because we might first need to get the chatter of our own concerns and needs and preoccupations, our perceptions, our prejudice out of the way. And that can be so difficult to do. I guess you would have watched a few years back the TV reality show The Apprentice hosted by Donald Trump. I think you've all heard of him. <laughs> but you remember how it was. Trump used to host this TV show to find the right person to come and work with him in a high-level role in one of his companies. And uh, you remember that candidates from all walks of life would arrive on the scene for a job interview that will last for a number of weeks. They came from all over America, and they were the best and the brightest of what America had to offer. Attorneys, stockbrokers, executives, and Trump would select his favorite candidate by the process of elimination until he got his best apprentice for a one-year contract. And several other countries, several other countries had similar shows that um, each had their own worth. Over 2,000 years ago, there was a 30-year-old man who had more power and influence than Donald Trump or any competent TV host could ever dream of. And he was beginning, ready to begin a three-year three -year period of sincere hard work vis-a-vis -vis the task of building his kingdom here on earth that would change the course of human history and would stand forever. How did he begin? Well, he began for, with a search for a team, an inner circle. They would be his high-level representatives who would take on the leadership of his kingdom on his completion of his mission here. The Gospel lesson, which Sam read from John, gives us a picture of how Jesus conducted his first apprentice interview for the job of fishing for people. Andrew is his first candidate. The interview goes like this. What are you looking for? And Andrew answers, of course, with a question. Where are you staying? It's like saying, what's your father saying? Where are you from? Where are you staying? And of course, Jesus says, well, come and see. I'll show you where I'm staying. And, of course, Andrew went, saw where Jesus was staying, remained with him that day and for the rest of his life. And isn't it too bad that we don't have recorded some of the conversation that took place between Jesus and Andrew that day? Oh, how rich that could be. And then it was his job also to start fishing for people. And the first one he tried was his own brother Peter, and he set before us, of course, the example for uh, evangelism. Without Andrew, there wouldn't have been a Peter. Often people today think, that telling others about Jesus 
is the last thing we can do as Christians. With Andrew, it was the most natural thing to do. Because if you've encountered Jesus and been touched by him, you're going to want to tell somebody. If someone brought you to Christ, you go and bring someone else. And you know, the closest that we've had in the Presbyterian Church in Canada to a successful evangelism program is called Evangelism Face to Face, where you talk to a friend and you bring a friend to church. And I've seen it work here and in other places. In 1934, Albert McMakin, a 24 year old farmer, became a Christian. He was so full of enthusiasm that he filled a truck with people and took them to a meeting to hear about Jesus. There was this particularly good looking young man who Albert especially wanted to get to the meeting, but this young man was difficult to persuade. He didn't seem too interested in Christianity, and finally he agreed begrudgingly to go along if Albert let him drive the truck. So Albert let him drive the truck, and when they arrived, he decided to go in, and he found himself, in his own words, spellbound by the teaching of the Bible. And he began to have thoughts that he'd never known before, and he went back each night to these meetings to hear more until one night he went forward to give his life to Jesus Christ. And since that day, that young truck driver has spoken to at least 250 million people about Jesus, even going on to become the spiritual advisor to the last nine presidents of the USA. And of course, you know who it was, the young truck driver was Billy Graham. Back in May of 2002, the Lilly Endowment, which is one of the world's largest private philanthropic foundations headquartered in Indianapolis, sponsored a survey that involved interviews with some 300,000 worshipers in 2,200 churches representing some eight denominations. And they found that three quarters of churchgoers reported they came to church the first time because someone invited them. Someone invited them. And yet 54% of those surveyed said they had not invited anyone to church in the past year. And so apparently the author said a lot of Christians just don't invite people to come to Jesus. The story of a little boy who he moved from the farm into the city, so everything was so new, uh, everything was a novelty. And he got up one morning, he was so filled with excitement that his mother, who wanted to sleep in, <laughs> dressed him in his play clothes and told him to play in the yard and quit bothering her. I guess you could do that in those days. About 20 minutes later, he came running back and said, Mommy, Mommy, everybody has doorbells and they all work. <laughs> <laughs> well, from the calling of Samuel in the temple to the calling of the disciples by Jesus to calling disciples today, we know there's probably not another Billy Graham around today, but we know that every one of us can be an Albert McMakin. 
We can all talk to a friend. We can bring a friend to church. Bring a friend to Christ. And not everyone can be a Peter. We don't all <clears throat> have Peter's personality or his gifts or his flair, but everyone can be an Andrew. Everyone can encounter Jesus. Everyone can accept his invitation to follow. Every one of us can bring people to Jesus. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now unto him be ascribed in the church by Christ Jesus, all glory, honor, dominion, majesty, and power, world without end. Amen. <clears throat> and Jesus promised that you and I will come to see heaven open and angels dancing in splendor. Our offerings are a thanksgiving for these gifts. Open now your hearts and share your possessions so that the church's work is made strong for the sake of this needy world. For those who 
that have no home and no employment, for those who were either unjustly or justly imprisoned, for parents and children who live in fear for any reason, and for all who are in mourning this day, God of grace, hear our prayer. With thanksgiving, we remember all those who have shaped us in your ways, O God. Receive our prayers and grant whatever you see that your people need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom we are bold to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever.
sense are beneficial. Listen to the word of the Lord as you move through your days. Trust that the Holy Spirit will guide your choices. See in each person you meet one for whom Jesus gave his life. The blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.